is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox We are San Diego. The Padres are rolling into San Francisco. It's game two of a three-game series. The Padres and Giants from AT&T Park, and it's next on Fox Sports San Diego. It's game two of a three game series between the San Diego Padres and the San Francisco Giants from AT&T Park. Tonight, a very good pitching matchup again as off the DL is Andrew Kashner. He's two and three matched up against Jeff Samarger in his first year with the Giants is six and two. We're out here in a cable car here at AT&T Park out in right center field. Don Arcillo along with Mark Grant. Welcome to Padres baseball. Well, for the Padres, they've had a tough time of it lately, but their starting pitching has still been very good. It all begins with the starting pitching. You look at the majority of teams in Major League Baseball who are in first place or in contention, it starts with the starters. And the San Diego Padres have been doing their job at that start. Starting core, a 2.85 ERA the last 11 games, and you see they're right up there with some teams who are in the hunt. While they're holding up their end of the deal, when they walk a hitter, it really hasn't hurt them. And the good thing, as far as the defense is concerned, they don't spend a lot of time on the field, Don. So they're out there, they get back in the dugout, a chance for them to score some runs, but that's been an Achilles heel as well. We saw last night Drew Pomerantz, an outstanding effort, but again, no run support, it's been a trend. Drew Pomerantz and the starters have been holding up their end of the deal, but the hitters for the San Diego Padres since May 15th not doing a good job. Two and a half runs per game. There's no wiggle room for this pitching staff to go out there. If they give up a run, it seems like it's insurmountable. So right now, the pitchers got to stick to their plan, and the hitters, they got to crush some mistakes. We've seen the last week or so, the opposing pitchers throwing some pitches right over the middle of the plate, and they're not capitalizing. They're not crushing. They should be crushing those pitches. Hopefully that changes tonight. Ring that bell. All right, we're on our way. Coming up, a tough loss last night for the Padres in game one of the series. Matt Kemp will have some answers as Julie Alexandria will join us from Fisherman's Wharf right after this.
Welcome back to Padres Baseball, everybody. We're here at Fisherman's Wharf, which is one of the premier destinations for tourists in the Bay Area. Well, last night's loss to the Giants was, by all accounts, a very tough one to take as the Padres were shut out for the 10th time in 46 games. And no one felt more responsible than right fielder Matt Kemp. The ball should have been caught. That's my fault. There's, there's really no, um, there's really not much to say other than it should have been caught. That's not Emma Reese's ball. That's my ball. It's easy for me coming in to, to get the ball and him going back. So I, I take all the fall for that. But was there something with the wind? That didn't like take the ball just should have been caught, man. You know, it's in the air too long. Um, should have been caught. <laughs> uh, was there any communication between you and Emory on the play? Or did you hear him? Or, or Honestly, I mean, what are you looking for, dog? I just said the ball should have been caught. And he, nobody said anything. It was just, um, it just should have been caught. After the one nothing loss, Andy Green called a team meeting in the clubhouse post game saying, I think we're at that point collectively that it's time for a talk. Well, when we come back, don't miss Mike Pomerantz and Mark Sweeney breaking down Jeff Samarja, starting pitcher for the Giants. Stay tuned.
tell you what, folks, that is a big league pitcher by Andrew Castro. See you later. That is high, deep, and very good. Span up the middle, reaching his Ramirez. Spins and fires and gets him. Nice play. Welcome back to San Francisco as we get ready for game two of this three game series between the Padres and the Giants and as you can see Andrew Katcher just finishing up his warm up tosses making his way down to the Padres dugout cloud covered uh, right now at and Park 58 degrees so a little chillier than last night about eight degrees less tonight than it was last night it's supposed to get a little chillier as the night goes on and the breeze again with this kind of a swirling wind here at at and Park as Jeff Samarja runs out of the field with his team right now and takes the hill check out the umpire and crew Mike Muchlinski has the play calling the balls and strikes with Mike Winters the crew chief at first base Mark Wegner at second base and Marty Foster is the umpire at third. Let's check out what Samarja will face tonight as far as the Padres lineup goes. It is brought to you by Toyota. John Jay at the top of the order. He is in center field with Alexi Amarista at second base. Matt Kemp is in right batting third with Jan Herbis Salarte at third base. Melvin Upton Jr. in left field. Brett Wallace at first base tonight. He bats six. Will Myers has the beginning of the game off. Derek Norris does the catching with Alexei Ramirez at shortstop batting eighth. And the return of Andrew Kashner of bats ninth in the Padres batting order. And the right-hander on the mound for the Giants is an all-star 2014 31-year-old Jeff Samarja, his 10th start in the scouting report, brought to you by Tough Shed. Hey, he's got the cutter, the sinker, the four-seam fastball, and the splitter. And you know what? He's hard, harder, and hardest. Not really that in-between with a big differential, so you can concentrate on hard stuff and take it up the middle, take it the opposite way, not like a Fernando Rodney, 95, and then an 83-mile-an-hour changeup. The defense for the Giants. It is Parker in left with Span in center and Blanco around in right. Third to first is Duffy Crawford. Panic in belt with Posey doing the catching for Jeff Samarja. How about the Giants? 11 of 12. They're, they're on fire right now. They're not scoring a lot of runs doing it. it it's unbelievable. That, so that tells me because the Padres not scoring a lot of runs too, but timely hits. And you know, a little bit of luck goes their way too. Absolutely. You have to be a little lucky. But uh, 11 of 12, the Giants have won. How about their starters like Samarja? 8 1 during that span, a 1.59 ERA. And you can see they've got some space now atop the National League West. Four and a half game lead over the Dodgers. Eight and a half better than the Padres, who they go head to head with tonight in game two of the series. And a chance for the Padres to take matters into their own hands and try to gain some ground here. Playing a night game tonight. We'll play day baseball here tomorrow. As the Padres and Giants ready to go in the middle game of the series, and Samarja ready to work to John Jay. And the first pitch of the ball game is in there for strike one, and we are underway. Samarja has been a great story so far here for the Giants this season. 31 years of age. Signed by the Giants as a free agent this past December. Elevates and Jay chases at 93 miles an hour down 0 and 2. Oh, his whip for the month of May, unbelievable. Under one. That's walks and hits to innings pitch combined. 0.79 for Jeff Samarja. What's that tell you? A lot of work out of the windup. Swing and a miss, and Jay strikes out. How about 95 on the fastball? And that's the game's first out. Let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Hey, turn back the clock against. Jeff Samarja. Why? Well, remember that outing back in April 27th, five and two thirds. They got five runs off the right-hander, and hopefully they can do that tonight in support for Kashner. Give him some runs. Give him some wiggle room. Give him some breathing room. Hey, if he gives up a two-run home run, hopefully the Padres still have the lead. Now one down for Alexi Amarista, batting out of the two spot for San Diego. That one kind of surrounded the plate. Uh, called the ball. Amarista returning from the DL, having a chance now to play on a more regular basis and starting again at second base tonight for Andy Green. Jumps back out of the way with a pitch running inside. The most of Samarja's career spent with the Chicago Cubs. Broke into the big leagues with the Cubs in 08. Was there until 2014. Trade deadline deal to the Oakland A's. And then last year, remember the Chicago White Sox in the American League, so returning to Chicago, but uh, on the other side, going to the South Side for a year. Yeah, he and Andrew Cashner were mates back with the Cubs in uh, 
2010 and 11. There's a couple of big right-handers, yo, on the yeah, absolutely. Uh, staff, huh? And going head-to-head -to -head tonight. Popped up right side as Joe Panic few strides on the outfield lawn. Will make the catch for the second out. And Marista retired. You know, 2012, Samarjo is a member of the Cubs, and since then, we look at his numbers through the years, and so far this year it's six and two. Said double figures in wins last year, but ended up individually under 500 at 11 and 13 with an ERA just under five. When Jeff Samarja and Johnny Cueto signed here with the, the, uh, the Giants, I think the ballpark has a lot to do with it. No, don't get me wrong. You just can't throw it down the middle and be successful. But I think this leans more towards the pitchers, wouldn't you say? I would say so. Okay. Yeah. Pitcher-friendly ballpark. So with that said, and we know how psychological this game of baseball can be. So when you have the talents of Cueto, Samarja coming here and kind of knowing that in the back of their mind, I, I think it affects the pitchers' performances. Try pitching in Cincinnati for a year or Denver yeah. for a year or Philly for a year. Oh. You know and to me I, I really do buy into the fact that there is somewhat of a competition going on here. You see what Johnny Cueto did last night. He wants to better what he did last night tonight. You see that from good teams really kind of feeding off each other's mm -hmm. starting pitching. I can see Cueto after the game last night. Hey yeah. Samarjo you're tossed the, the baton tomorrow. Hey see see if you can you know do something like that. Bumgarner going up to the guys. Hey I threw a two hitter. How about you trying to throw a one hitter. The 0 2 pitch is going to be outside to Matt Kemp. Well, Matt Kemp back on April 27th. It will take Samarja D. One of the 10 home runs that Kemp has on the year. That was very long. Very far. Very gone. And turning his back to the hitter. And that pitch didn't miss by a lot. A little bit high. Two two is drilled to left down towards the corner Parker on the run and that ball is going to be off the wall. Ricochet played by Parker throw to second and it's going to be close and Kemp will be out at second base. Great throw from left field Parker played it quickly got it in and out trying to leg it into a double is Matt Kemp to end things in the first inning. First inning Padres don't score in the top of the first inning and the Giants are coming up in the bottom of the first as we take a look at the Giants starting nine brought to you by Hyundai 
Denard Span leading it off with Joe Panic at second base. Matt Duffy is at third. Buster Posey in the cleanup spot doing the catching with Brandon Belt at first base. Brandon Crawford, the shortstop with Jared Parker, just made that fine defensive play and throw from left field. Gregor Blanco in right field and Jeff Samarja is the pitcher batting ninth with Kashner on the mound. And welcome back, Andrew. Scott report for the Texan aggressive with all of his pitches. Yes, be aggressive with the slider as well and no limitations. No pitch count. If he's good for 100, he's good for 100, 105. Big strong right hander ready to go. He's got to be anxious. The last time he threw the pill was back on the 8th of May against the Mets when he strained that hamstring around the bases. And again, a leg injury, so nothing to do with his arm. It's certainly going to be strong coming into this outing. He threw his bullpens, kept that arm strong. Did not want to go on the DL when he was placed on the DL at the time, but more precautionary than anything else. Thought he just needed a little bit more time and he'd be good to go, but as they could uh, make it retroactive, they decided to do it and he was placed on the disabled list. His last schedule to start in Milwaukee on the last road trip for the Padres. And Art Span grounds one to second base. Hammerista for the first out here in the bottom of the first inning. Stuck out to the Padres defensively in behind Andrew Kashner, brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers. And left to right, it is Melvin Upton Jr., John Jay, and Matt Kemp. Third to first, Jan Herbis Solarte, Alexei Ramirez, Alexei Amarista, Brett Wallace at first base, and Derek Norris doing the catching for Andrew Kashner. One down here in the first inning brings up Joe Panic. And it came off the bench in last night's game, did not uh, start the game, but Came in late. Kelby Tomlinson started the game at second base last night. You see the numbers for Panic's got good pop, five homers. One of the Giants' second baseman who takes a strike right at the bottom of the zone. That was a lane changer by Andrew Kasher. Two seam action. O2 pitch. Uh, check swing. Did he go? No, says Marty Foster, third base umpire. Thought he went. And one of the Giants who is hitting is Joe Panic. Eight for his last 17 at 470. Three doubles in the last five games. Oddly enough, doing better against lefties than he is right handers. 309 against lefties, 233 against right handers, and he fouls this back to the screen. Well, if he's putting good numbers up against left handers, that tells yeah. me that he's kind of keeping that front side tucked in. He's utilizing the center of the plate to go to the left field, center field, left field, not trying to pull everything. He pulls this and lunging at first is Wallace. He'll flip to Kashner. He gets over to cover the bag for the second out. Nice play. And Wallace able to retrieve that. He's been doing most of his business on the other corner at third base, but moving to first base tonight with Will Myers getting the beginning of the game off. And Andrew Kashner quick off the mound. Hey, no problem with the legs there. Get over there. We hear that in spring training all the time, right? Absolutely. And a nice play by Brett Wallace. So two down here in the first inning, and it'll bring up Matt Duffy. Boy, if Andrew Kasher get out of the first inning with fewer than 12 pitches, oh, I would like that. I'm sure he would too. Well, Kasher this year, most pitches he's thrown in a game is 108. He's only gone over 100 pitches once. And his longest outing of the year is six innings. He's done that three times as Myers has a scheduled night off tonight for the Padres, but we'll see if he's used before games end. Chopped down the third baseline, a foul ball. Treated by Solarte, but in foul ground. Hey, Andrew's got the two seamer working early. He's utilizing both sides of the plate, working down below the knees. Looks very comfortable out there. Cooler night tonight than it was last night. Breeze still with us and appears to be blowing out to right center. Yeah, look at the mullet of Castor. It's blowing up around us. It looks like a like a horse tail. Fly 
flags are a gust again tonight. It's been a foul tip glancing off of Norris and it hangs at one and two. Pretty cool customer on a day that he pitches. Not one of the guys you see uh, kind of storming around on their starting day. Very relaxed, calm. Had a good conversation with him today before the, the ball game, and he's you wouldn't know he's starting that day. That's how relaxed he is. There are some guys don't even look him in the eye. No. One two pitch in the dirt outside. Comes in at two and three. 4.93 earned run average. It was eighth start, fresh off the DL. Up and in. Fly ball down the right field line. Kemp was playing him towards the line over his Wallace, and he can't catch it. And Wallace has had some trouble with pop ups. And over by the bullpen, he has trouble with this. He was there, but could make the catch. And Duffy will get another chance. Looks like Brett, he was camped there, and then all of a sudden, I don't know the wind, and then the juggling act cannot come up with it. Very catchable ball, E3. Now, the main thing here is that hopefully Andrew Cash can throw maybe just one pitch to get out of this inning, and not prolong the inning. So Duffy with another chance here with two down in the inning. And a ground ball to third. So it did take him just one more pitch to get out of it as Solarte throws across and gets Duffy. Down in order of the Giants. It's on to the second without a score. Focus on Jeff Samarja and how do you beat Jeff Samarja? Well, with a two seam sinker type pitcher and cutter, you have to have him get up in the zone, some lofty pitches to hack at. The cutter, the fastball, see the yellow box? That's where he doesn't want to be. Now, when he is on with his game with the cutter down and away, how about bringing back the two seamer? Tell you what, that's the paint right there. So you ask any hitting coach, hey, how do we get to this guy? How do we get to that guy? You got to get him up in the zone. If they get that one pitch in that bat, you better be swinging. And hopefully on first or second base for even more. Well, it is four, five, and six here for the Padres in the second inning. Jan Hervis Solarte, Melvin Upton Jr., and Brett Wallace expected to bat in the inning. Samarja giving up a hit in the first, but Matt Kemp gunned down at second base, trying to extend it into a double. Well played off the wall out there in left field by Jared Parker. Look at the difference between April and May for the Giants, and as a result, they've got some room. Top the National League West all of a sudden. Put together a string of 11 of the last 12 games. I would say they got the kinks out, huh, in May? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, you start the year 
new pitchers. You mentioned Cueto and Samarja. A lot of pressure on those guys to perform with their new teams. And they are really settling in and doing what they know they can do. The time of the Giants' offense has not been spectacular. Back-to-back -back one nothing wins. Cubs on Sunday night. Padres last night. Is a liner that is caught by Panic. He was actually headed in the wrong direction initially. Set it towards first base, and that one almost got away from him, but he's able to make the grab for the first out here of the second inning. Don, remember earlier I mentioned about teams having a little bit of luck to go their way and be on the winning side of the ledger. That ball hit right there, and hey, when, when things are going your way, guess what? Panic slips, falls, and that ball's into the right center field gap for at least a base hit. It's almost like he was, he knew what the pitch was going to be and was headed cheating a little bit in that, in the other direction, which would have been the wrong direction in that instance. And able to make the catch, and Upton will take a ball high. Over an average through the lineup, 256 the first time, 224 the second time, and just gets stronger as the night goes on. Yeah, don't let him get settled in. Got to get to him early. It's kind of like the buffet line. You got to get there early, Absolutely. get all the good stuff. <laughs> you don't want to wait, then it's slim pickings. Unless they bring a new batch. You got to time that just right. <laughs> Swing and a miss for Upton. Well, hopefully the that timing of these hitters is just right. There you go. Up to now, Wallace waiting on deck. Padres batting here in the second inning. There's nothing worse than trying to scrape the sides for the scalloped potatoes. <laughs> just off the outside edge. Strike on the outside corner. Upton knew it takes with him the second strikeout for Samarja. Remember the tools of the trade? We were talking about pitches down in the zone, pitches up in the zone, and look at this pitch here. It's the two seamer that that was a lane changer again. Outside, and then it ends up to the heart of the plate. Got him looking. Either that, he's got to have that cutter probably in the back of his mind as well. So two down here in the second inning brings up Brett Wallace. It's a start at first base tonight for the Padres. Wallace oh. sitting at 205 coming in. With three home runs and nine runs batted in. Ooh, 96. He's got it. A little extra on that one. That was the 26th start of the year for Brett Wallace. 21 at third base, five now at first base, and it has really been amazing. I mean, the injuries that have taken place for the Padres have led to Wallace really having a chance to start on a regular basis. Last year, primarily coming off the bench, having a very good year coming off the bench. Not easy to do. He's the 2 1 pitch foul back and out of play 2 and 2. On field straight away they are shifting on Brett Wallace on the right side like a lot of teams do for him to pull. Smart just got the good Moss going tonight too. 2 2 and that is going to miss. Something about good moss and the breeze, you know. Yeah, it's um, and with the conditions, it's it's, it's a great formula. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Derek Norris waiting on deck. Uh, Sands moss, but a lot of beard. It's almost Randy Johnson looking like yep. right here, as far as with the, the long hair and the uh, goatee. Randy Johnson, uh, giant briefly in his career. Outside ball four. So Wallace walked four times last Friday night and he walks here with two down in the second inning. So base runner with two away and that brings up Derek Norris. Well comfort zone right we all like to be in our comfort zone and Samarja. 
sure he gave up that base hit to Kemp, but thrown out at second base. But he's been through the windup. Now into the stretch, and let's see if Derek Norris can do some damage. You haven't picked the stick, don't you? I do not. Oh, you took no, Alexi? Emory I, I got you. Yep. Okay. I, and I was on the fence. That's why you thought I took Norris, because I was going back and forth right until the time I made my pick. What was the deciding factor? Um, Emerista has hits against Samarja. Norris does not. Okay. Outfield straight away on Norris. Bell playing in front of Wallace at first base. And a liner foul off to the right out of play. Oh, I think Derek had the right idea. Pitch number two up middle. Away just a little bit, trying to spank that ball to the right side. A ball and two strikes now to Norris. Last season in his first year with the Padres, setting career highs in nearly every offensive category. Oh. Evens at uh, two and two. With 49 extra base hits last year, the most among all catchers in 2015. This year so far, four home runs on the year for Derek Norris. Dealing with Jeff Samarja with two down and Brett Wallace at first base. Foul back to the screen, we'll do it again. And the Giants, who are on a pretty good streak right now. Winning 11 of the last 12 games. 14 wins at home, 14 wins on the road for the Giants. Well, a lot of pitches have been up from Samarja during this at bat. He really has got to concentrate on making an adjustment here, or else Derek Norris maybe get a, a good pitch to hit. All five pitches up above, above the knees. Swing and a miss, and Norris strikes out. Third strikeout for Samarja. Through an inning and a half without a score.
no score as we head to the bottom of the second here in San Francisco. Well, in order to reinstate Andrew Kashner from the 15-day disabled list, the Padres have optioned right-handed pitcher uh, Kevin Quackenbush back down to AAA El Paso. Andy Green said it was a tough decision to make, but one that he said is predicated on his performance down in AAA and also the team's needs. One thing that he wanted him to work on was fastball command. Obviously not an easy conversation to have. No, certainly surprising. Thank you very much, Julie. Uh, I have to say that I was very surprised by this move. Yeah, I was too. But you know what, though? Uh, they've got their uh, fingers on the pulse of what's going on down there. Um, it only takes 25 man roster, right? You can't yep. have 26. And the majority of the time in, is when a pitcher goes down. It's basically fastball command. Buster Posey leading it off here for the Giants. I mean, if you can't hit your spots, you know, they, these, these hitters are going to turn it around. Posey has been slumping at the plate, coming up in some key spots, too. 64 average for him the last 16 games. As he takes the strike, still in the cleanup spot. What's the old adage, uh, let a sleeping dog lie? Yeah. Don't wake him, huh? <laughs> Don't poke the bear. Right. <laughs> yeah. Look at the way they are playing Posey here with Jay in the right center for him to go the other way. Overall batting average of 263 for Posey. This is a guy you don't want to walk right now. With those numbers we just showed you, him struggling. Ground ball to third. Salarte. Well, the first out here of the second inning. Four ground ball outs to begin the night for Kashner. So. That's certainly a good thing for Andrew Kashner. Well, against the Giants, two and two thirds innings on April 27th, he lost to the Giants. He had four hits and six runs. Three of the six were earned. Ended up throwing 89 pitches in that outing. Well, we talked about command and missing in the zone, being wild in the zone. Down here in the second inning brings up Brandon Bell. Bell with a shift on diving is Solarte and he fires to first base. Jan Hervis Solarte moving from third to the right side of the infield on the shift and a diving grab showing off some pretty good defense for the Padres two down. He's all over the place. This ball is crushed the one hopper and oh my goodness laying out. Picking up Andrew Castor, that's a big league play right there. We always talk about first step for the outfielders, the same for the infielders. Going all the way over from third base to play in second base area, and yes, it's the tip of the cap. Brandon Maurer says, nicely done. Ryan Buchter wearing the beanie tonight, clapping some hands, showing some love. Two down here in the second for Brandon Crawford. Well, things are going well. Castro's getting a lot of ground ball outs, and right now, the first five outs of this game have been all on the ground. Sharp breakers down in the zone, the two seam lane changer. Hard to elevate those pitches to the outfield. And some help from his friends, too. Nice play by Young Hervis Solarte. Field about straight away here on Brandon Crawford. As that'll bounce in, and all of a sudden Kashner falls behind here 3 0. Oh. Fun night at the ballpark. Yeah, some Padres fan mixed in there. Future big leaguers. Hey, he's outnumbered, but he's he's gonna stand tall. He's not going anywhere. He's not scared off. <laughs> right? Absolutely. He'll skip in, and it's ball four. First base runner of the night for the Giants. Crawford down to first base with two outs here in the second inning. Jared Parker coming up. Seven year old recalled from Triple A prior to tonight's game. This place uh, Angel Pagan on the 15 day DL. 
Parker coming up and Parker getting the start in left field. He's already played in three games this year for the Giants hitting at 250 one for four. Second recall this season. He was hitting at 281 with 13 home runs in 36 games. The Triple A Sacramento at the time of his recall. Made his big league debut last year with the Giants. 347 in 21 games. And he's bunting here. Kashner quickly off the mound. He'll fire to first and a nice athletic play by Kashner. Well, nice defense. Jan Hervis Salarte on the right side of the infield of the shift with a diving play. Scoreless through two. Andrew Kashner has thrown a total of 28 pitches through the first two innings. And a bunt play there with two outs. Jared Parker, not sure what he was thinking or trying to do there with two down in the inning, but very odd. odd. Yeah, it's very strange. Now <laughs> <laughs> it is Alexei Ramirez to lead it off here in the top of the third inning, and Ramirez will take a strike. Ramirez, Kashner, and Jay scheduled a bat here in the inning for the Padres. Eight, nine, and one. And Samarja combined to have 12 wins, or rather 11 wins last year, a total of seven wins the year before. Foul back to the screen. He's incorporating the turn a little bit too. Yes, he you did. mentioned that earlier in the year. Goes his back to the hitter, creating a little bit more momentum, possibly going towards home plate. Remember, but nothing moves towards home plate until that body is squared up over the rubber. You start to lean and drift towards home plate while your body's still turned. That spells trouble. He's in pretty good sync right there. So when he twists, see when he twists, watch, he won't start going forward until right there. He's kind of drifting a little bit, but his arm is, when the front foot hits and his arm is up top, that's in a good position right there. If he's too quick, the arm will drag and work underneath it and flatten everything out. To left field, Parker was playing deep, and that's going to fall. Running out there was the shortstop, Brandon Crawford, but he can't grab it, and it is a base hit. Second hit of the night for San Diego. And a good start to this third inning for Alexei Ramirez. Well, it looked like a breaking ball. And you know what? He wanted to throw that on the inside part of the plate towards the front hip. 
yanked outside. Pulled and just hit softly enough to drop in between Parker and Crawford. Pretty good play coverage right there by yeah. Alexei Ramirez. The pitcher was running away. Not a terrible pitch. As Kashner drops it down and it'll take a throw over his shoulder in time to get Kashner on the sacrifice that gets Alexei Ramirez to second base. So Brandon Bell charging in the first baseman. Kashner with good speed got by him pretty quickly so he couldn't tag him. So play off the mound and running down the line Andrew Kastner like he always does 100 percent. No side effects from that. Hamstring strain. Of course he did it running in that last yeah. outing that he had and remember Andrew does the right thing there. The fielder always has the way to the ball the right of way to the ball. One out Ramirez at second base and John Jay the batter second time through. Most career hits against Samarja. John Jay's got 10. Kutchin leading the way. Jay struck out in the first inning. His second look at him tonight, and this will get away. Up onto the screen and heading to third is Ramirez. Rounds it. On well, the wild pitch on court there by Jeff Samarja. The Padres have a runner at third with one out. Looked like a splitter or something. Maybe a two seamer. It was definitely off speed, it looked like. Buster Posey kind of played it strangely. Went to the backhand there with it in front of him. So quickly by him to the screen, and now the infield in. First wild pitch of the year for Jeff Samarja. Swing and a miss. Fastball. That's exactly what Jay struck out on first time up. It was a fastball up that he couldn't catch. Well, the job by Johnny Cueto again last night. He has really been tough on oh. the Padres. Talk about cruise control. Unbelievable. I mean, not just locating his fastball, but his secondary stuff. Remember, did you notice that as well last night? Yeah. The change up. He was going for all strikes. Yeah. Good quality strikes. Got ahead a bunch last night. Well pitched by Drew Pomerantz, too, but again, yeah. no run support for him. And the numbers are off the charts for Pomerantz pitching very well. His ERA continues to plummet. Fourth in all the baseball. Swing and a miss. Now John Jay striking out for the second time tonight. This time with the runner at third. Well, Drew Pomerantz, the lefty, he had it working. It was a pitcher's duel getting Buster Posey with the breaking stuff in. Matt Duffy, see you later. And then the old pickoff move, thanks to uh, some defense and Alexi Reese to go right after him. Fourth in Major League Baseball ERA behind Jake Arrieta, Clayton Kershaw, and Chris Sale. Oh yeah, you heard it here first. Number four in all of baseball through Pomerantz with a 1.70 ERA. Well, two down, Ramirez at third base, and here's Alexi Amarista. It's a drive in the game's first run as he takes a pitch high. Marista first time up popped out to Joe Panic at second base. Alexei Ramirez at third, two down. There's a strike, a high strike at that. And it evens a count of one and one. Coming in at six and two, the 2.66 earned run average. Tenth start of the year for the tall right-hander. <laughs> On the ground, right side, Panic will play the good hop, and he throws out Amarista. Padres lead. Alexei Ramirez at third base. No score through two and a half.
third inning back at AT and T Park in San Francisco. Time now for Quick and Loans Rockets Arms. And we take a look at the, the game's best arms right now. Chris Sale, who is on his way to a loss tonight, but nine and zero heading into today's action. Jake Arrieta eight and zero. Clayton Kershaw seven and one. And we saw Johnny Cueto pick up his seventh win here last night. All right. Well, here's the deal. If I was posed the question, you got to pick one of those four. Yep. Game seven of the World Series. Yep. I'm picking Kershaw. Yep, I'm with it. But, 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 he doesn't have too good of a no, postseason, postseason numbers. No, he does not. But still, I will take that chance. Yes. Gregor Blanco to lead it off here in the bottom of the third inning against Andrew Kashner. We saw him at uh, Dodger Stadium pitch against the Padres. And that was the first time that I get to see him pitch in person. I had not seen Clayton Kershaw yeah. pitch in person. You talk about impressive. You know, when you talk about good pitching, the one thing that comes up in people's minds is when they talk about repeating a delivery. And, and I don't, th you know, there's been people around that have seen much more baseball than I have. But I will tell you this Clint Kershaw, I don't think I've ever seen a pitcher repeat his delivery like he does. When he threw that no hitter last year against Colorado, mm -hmm. somebody put together, it was, it was really. Line to right, Kemp on the move, and that's going to get in for a hit. Gregor Blanco has the first hit of the night off Andrew Kashner a single to begin the bottom of the third inning. They put together this picture of every pitch. It was like 115 pitch effort in that no hitter. And they superimposed every single pitch that he threw on top of one another. Mm -hmm. And right it was fr from the center field camera. And it's like the variation of his hand and his in his kick and, and everything. It was like the difference was that much repeating everything. Now fastball off speed pitch everything. Bunt drop down. Kastner has got it. He will toss to first. But Samarja on the sacrifice that goes one to three is able to get Blanco into second base. Now, when you combine that and then the command of your off speed pitches and putting guys away quickly, I don't think I've seen a guy I'm trying to think. Randy Johnson, he put a guy, he put guys away quickly. But I, I think, Don, in our generation, in this generation, man, as far as left handers are concerned, yeah. I mean, Clayton Kershaw is up there. Now, you had the chance to see Pedro firsthand, Pedro Martinez. To me, he was the greatest pitcher that I ever saw. Really? Absolutely. Wow. Every time he would pitch, it would be an event. You yeah. always kind of expected you were going to either see a no hitter or something spectacular that night. What year did, did he have the lights out? Was it 2002? 2000. Uh, Pedro. I think it was 2000. 99 was the year of the All Star game that he appeared in. And we've showed it a few times in our All Star moments that he. But ended up striking out five <laughs> in two innings, and there are impressive guys on that list. There's one year that Pedro Martinez had that is just mind boggling. It was nasty, too. Oh. I mean, intimidating for a guy that was not intimidating and you stood next to him at all. And a different guy the other days when he was not pitching. As Tenard Span bats here and takes pitch down low. Well, one of the Best lefties I've ever seen in my career was he was fortunate to be a teammate of him. It was Randy Johnson, the yep. Mariners. Yep, 92. Uh, right handed pitchers, John Smoltz is up there. I was never a teammate of Maddox. Uh, but you talk about a competitor. Uh, you know, I think Martinez and Smoltz are in the same mold. On the ground, vacated left side, and that's into left field for a base hit. Bronco's going to try and score. Upton's throw the plate is a good one, and at the plate, he's out. Gregor Blanco thrown out from Melvin Upton Jr. in left field. We'll see if the Giants are going to challenge this. Blanco wants a challenge. Let's say Ramirez at the time at second base was going to cover the bag to try to keep Blanco close. Ended up vacating left side of the infield. Casha didn't see it. And came home with the pitch and opened up that left side. Well, from the beginning, a great setup, a great throw by Melvin Upton Jr. And does you know his front foot never hits? I think his back foot hits, but is the tag applied before? See the front foot? It's up. It's not even close to the plate. So does Derek Norris get him on the backside before his back leg hits the plate? See what I'm saying? Yeah. Or hear what I'm saying? You see what, what's on TV? I see what's on TV and I yeah. hear you. So this might give it away right here. Okay, front foot misses. Back foot. Uh, is he tagged before the back foot? And the call on the field is out, and that's a key to see whether or not there's enough there to overturn it either. Oh, yeah, I think he got him. Boy, what a great job all the way around. Melvin Upton Jr., Derek Norris. 
Nice uh, shot on the big board here that the crowd likes what they see. I'm not sure what they saw. Uh, I don't know now. Yeah, after they, seeing that. They've got another shot on the board we do not have. And it looked like that back foot did hit the home plate area before Norris applied the tag. So I, I don't know. We'll wait and see. We'll let them handle it. Let New York handle it. And in the meantime, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure. Now that I've seen I've, that, I just hope there's. Um, I just hope they don't have enough to where they can overturn it. Oh, see, there's his foot on. Yeah, I think that's the. Does his foot? Is his foot touching the plate, or is it? Can't tell. And people are worried about the length of games and they're concerned about the intentional walk really you could have intentional walk the whole team in the time safe wow overturn wow. and the Giants will take a one nothing lead so apparently that back foot did get in So it'll be a single and an RBI for Denard Span that gives the Giants the one nothing advantage. Bunko thought he had beat it and he wanted to challenge right away. They do challenge it and the call is overturned. And once again Melvin Upton Jr. Just charging that ball correctly and making a good throw a little bit just a little bit towards the first base side of the home plate area. But still all around you know they did they did a fine job. So Joe Panic now batting with a runner at first, one out to run in. Well, setting up that base hit too, Alexei Ramirez was at second base, waiting for a throw to try to pick off Blanco and then opened up the whole left side of that infield. As the pitch is going to miss away. Line out towards right center field, and Jay will track it down. A little plant fire back towards the infield. On a line drive out to right center field, Jay goes and gets it. Two down. And Span back to the bag at first. It'll bring up Matt Duffy. Duffy grounded out to third base in the first inning. 0 for 1. This alignment we've seen many times before for Duffy. John Jay goes well into right center. Rubber foul. You know, from our vantage point, obviously it looks weird. Imagine being the center fielder and playing there. That's got to be odd for John Jay as well. Yeah. It's worked a few times where it's been lined right in his general direction, though, and so they've gone back to it many times. Most exaggerated shift we've seen on any player this year. But here's what I was talking about before with Alexei Ramirez. He was kind of had that daylight play going on at second base. He went over there trying to get the attention of. Actually, it's before all this. He went over to cover the bag at second. And there's the plate. The plate originally called out, but then overturned. One one is going to miss, and it's two and one. Towards the line and right also is Kemp as the pitch in the dirt. Caster in charge of the run so far in this inning on two hits. Well, one to one, ball strikes for Andrew Caster, 42 pitches. 
That's why I think the uh, the pitch count is overrated and the ratio. Outside ball four and down to first base goes Duffy. That's a second walk. All right, so here's what I'm talking about, Mike. Here's a daylight play at second base. There it is. And he was Kashner commits. there. Kashner commits. The entire left side is open, and there you have mm -hmm. the base hit that went into left field that led to that run. So much and going on. I don't on know there. if that was a predetermined play, yeah. and Kash you know, didn't see it. That that's just a play to where it is the daylight play. It's the choice of the pitcher whether he steps off and throws. You know, they might have a. a a planned play where the shortstop or you know they'll pick at their pants and then the guy will answer back and then it's then it's a bang as soon as he breaks you're going the daylight play he can show glove but it's the prerogative of the pitcher to either step off throw or go to the plate pitch in there for a strike to Buster Posey Posey who grounded out to third base in the second and ain't going for one Giants have two on already a run in here for San Francisco in the third inning. You know Don you make a good point on that because when we looked at that play. I, I think that he would have maybe had a chance to even dive to get to that ball to prevent the run. Sure. So that's a good point. I mean there's no way he's going to throw out the runner. There's no way they're going to get him at third base but preventing a run was the, the main concern there. At least knock it down. Exactly. Two one, and that's going to miss not by a lot. And it is three and one now with Brandon Belt waiting on deck. Two down here in the third inning for the Giants. Those you spray it foul off to the right. Posey trying to get straightened out at the plate right now. He's hitting at just 182 with runners in scoring position this season. Three for his last 18 in that category, and here he is. The runner at second base in the third and two down. Shot right side. Amarista will flip the first and end the inning. The Giants strike first, take a 1 0 lead to the fourth inning.
here in San Francisco. Well, we just saw a call reviewed and new for 2016, MLB has decided to have a second replay center right here in San Francisco. Its location and proximity to Silicon Valley was really the impetus to have it here on the West Coast, not to mention crews in New York stay up way past midnight reviewing calls for West Coast games. And just in case of a power outage, the calls would be reviewed right here in San Francisco. But as of yet, the San Francisco hub has yet to review a single call. But good to know that they do have a backup center right here on the West Coast. Not a bad idea. No, it's great. Thank you, Julie. As we head here to the fourth inning, one to nothing, Giants have the lead. Get a run in the bottom of the third. Matt Campion, Harvest Salerte, and Melvin Upton Jr. And a grounder left side softly hit to Crawford. Matt Kemp retired for the first out here of the fourth inning. Matt Kemp had a single back in the first inning, but. Rounds out this time to bring up Young Hervis Salarte. Salarte lining out to Joe Panic at second base in the second inning, 0 for 1. You like coming to San Francisco? I love coming to San Francisco. So I love this ballpark. Yeah, do you have any concerns when you're here? Uh, I'm, a, I'm not crazy about earthquakes. Okay, so there's always that in the back of my mind. Yeah, that's what you're getting at. You're thinking right along with me yeah. because, you know, getting ready. Getting ready for the game today, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm in my room and in the shower. And every time I come here to San Francisco and I'm getting ready, I'm in the shower getting ready to go. It's like I, I just that's the one thing I think of. If the rumbling is going to shower, no, when I'm in the shower, getting ready, for, you know, everybody oh. showers. Come on, no, no, I know you shower and it's a good thing. I'm very happy. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I'm in the shower but and then all of a sudden everything starts shaking and then it just that's the one thing that always enters my mind. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's you know. Yeah. It's well, one thing if you're, you know, you know, it's two o'clock in the morning and you're in bed. You can, you know, you can get up, you can throw some shoes on, and bang, you know. Yeah, but not when you're in the shower. <laughs> it's like, come on now. I've been here a few times where sirens have been going off afterwards, and I didn't even know that it had happened. Right. Uh, been here a number of times. Of course, play Oakland across the bay uh -huh. here, and that's happened a lot. And it's always a possibility. They also, in our hotel, have a video. Uh, the last big one that took place. And oh, they that's showed great. Him, yeah, have you seen the video? I have. It's on. Yeah. And it's on all the time. Yeah. And thanks for reminding. Yeah. Us. So it could happen. So yeah, it should be in the back of your mind. You but other, other than that, I love, I love coming up here. And, uh, it's great. Two two pitches fouled off. Got a piece of Buster Posey. Hey, the Cuidado kid on the right, Eduardo Ortega and Carlos Hernandez, and a Feliz Cumpleaños, Carlos, on the left. Big fans of those guys. How are you feeling, Marcos? I gotta tell you, Eduardo is working very hard in the gym lately. Yeah. It's unbelievable. 2 2. His foul back to the screen. He's putting on a show in the morning. Our Fox Sports San Diego team that you're not part of works out on a daily basis in the gym. <laughs> we never see you. But Eduardo is in there and he is, I mean, he is getting after it. He's a runner. Yes, he is. He's in good shape. I'm down here in the fourth inning. I love the Cuidado kid. Salarte now and Melvin Upton Jr. waiting on deck. Foul over by Upton on the on deck circle. That was one of those pitches that I was talking about in our open. Yep. Remember, we've seen a handful, maybe more, over the course of time to where one pitch can make a difference, either tie it up or take the lead. Man, that pitch there by Samarja was uh, up a little bit and right down the heart of the plate. The Fox tracks there. We look at pitch number seven, number two, and number seven. Right there. Look at the bat turned in here by Solarte. Pitch count at 56 right now for Samarja. We had one out in the visiting half of the fourth inning. Four and Salarte with a one out walk, second walk tonight allowed by Samarja. He threw a lot of pitches at that bat. Yes, he did. Eight. I had five and six, seven, eight. <laughs> Our great statistician Dave Feldman here 
I looked at him and said, how many pitches? And he put up put five. His fingers and up three. and then there was and like I, I know I know a full hand open is five. Right. And then I had to go six. And then you were adding after yeah. that. It took a little while. <laughs> one out, one on. And a pitch downstairs now to Melvin Upton Jr. Struck out looking in the second inning. Samarja with four K's on the night through three and a third. Runs have been tough to come by. Randy Green and the Padres lately. Yeah, I talked to Andy before the game and he said, you know what, it's, it's tough with. Uh, There's a line that's going to drill into two. Hot shot right at Brandon Belt. Able to make the grab, then tag the bag and end the top of the fourth. It's the way it's been going for the Padres right now. The DP ends the top of the fourth. Giants have a one nothing lead. Great moment in All Star history is brought to you by Geico. It was July 9th, the 2002, in the Midsummer Classic in Milwaukee. Tory Hunter, Minnesota Twins at the time, robbed one of the game's most notable mashers. Barry Bond to the San Francisco Giants. As a pitch up high here to Brandon Bell. You met Tory Hunter? I have not, but I hear he's he a great egg. A terrific guy. Yeah. There's a fly ball down the left field line. Long run up to Junior coming in and over. Kind of twilight right now here in San Francisco. Tough sky, but he makes the catch. Let's take a look at the farm right now for the Padres and who is excelling right now for San Diego. Well, we saw a lot of Hunter Renfro during spring training, and he has got it going on. Yeah, well, in fact, you know, it's funny. I was looking at the top 30 prospects today online. Back at the hotel for the Padres and uh, see Hunter Renfro. Just a matter of time. Nick Torres down in Double A. You know, I really like the A Double A type kids and those guys that the Padres got in the Kimbrel trade mm -hmm. from Boston. Hopefully, paying some dividends quickly. Maybe well, Margo. Yeah, maybe a year or two, right? Sure. So a lot of Margo during the spring. Do a lot of different things. Get an eye on El Paso as this year continues. But Triple A is really a funny type league, and I know you did a lot of announcing in Triple A, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've got the veteran guys who are trying to hang on that are there. They're bitter at the world because yeah. they shouldn't be there. Right. Very angry. <laughs> then, and then you've got the young studs coming up, the prospects. There's a fly ball down the right field line that's going to make its way foul. And the distance down there, but a foul ball to the right of the pole. And what a catch by that man right there. 
That's why you're bringing your glove to the yard. Just right of the foul pole and this fan. Nice grab. We're saying so you got, boy. So the, you got the, the miserable the old, guys. The visible, you get, yeah, it's coming bitter. down. They're bitter at the world. They hate, they hate everybody. Right. And then you've got the young prospect guys who are on their way up, and they're just, oh my gosh, Triple A, this is great. I'm going right. to step away from the big leagues. And there's those guys that have been to Triple A that can run for mayor in that certain town. Right. Just, oh, okay. Four A type player. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm happy to be here. I'm still playing ball. I still got a job. Swing and a miss as Crawford strikes out. That's the first strikeout of the night for Andrew Kashner. Two down. Yeah, as Kashner being aggressive. Remember one of the keys or one of the scouting reports? Be aggressive with the breaking ball. Very aggressive. Buries it inside and bad hack by Crawford. Because here's the deal in Triple A, you don't want your prospects who are coming up through Triple A to get a bad attitude from the guys that have been around a long time. The bad attitude guys. Yes. You need to get, which the BAGs. I think the bad attitude guys. One of the toughest jobs you can have is to be a manager at the Triple A level. I wouldn't want it. I mean, it is it is very very difficult, and largely because of the guys coming down who are miserable. To be coming down and trying to keep them positive yep. and keep. Uh, fly ball to center, right at John Jay. And that will end the inning. A 1 2 3, fourth inning for Kashner, a 1 0 Giants lead. Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Sequan Casino. Sign up for the new Padres Club card today. By SeaWorld, enter tonight's keyword otter on the Ways to Win page at FoxSportsSanDiego.com. And by Mercury Insurance, we're on a mission to save you money. Log on to MercuryInsurance.com today. Now back in the beautiful city of San Francisco, the sun has set here tonight. And the Padres looking for their first run of the night. Trail one to nothing to the Giants. Into the fifth inning we go, and it'll be Brett Wallace, Derek Norris, and Alexei Ramirez. Six, seven, and eight coming up here for San Diego. Brett Wallace reach base in the second inning on a walk. One of two walks allowed tonight by the tall right-hander, Jeff Samarja. Padres have had a base runner in every inning so far. Able to push one across, best chance they had. Left Alexei Ramirez at third base in the third inning. He was there when Jay struck out and Amarista grounded out. I mean, how about the balls that have been hit hard tonight? There's yeah. been like two or three. The one to uh, Duffy or uh, Panic at second base, that double play we just saw last half inning. Looks for a strike over the inside corner. Now Wallace down 0 and 2. Or I should say in the uh, top of the fourth inning. Some balls hit hard.
shifting are the Giants here on the right side on Wallace. They've been doing that consistently. And Joe Panic, second baseman out in short right field. It's March at 95, 96 at times tonight. She had a lot of fastballs too, some cutters slash sliders as well. Maybe one or two splitties. And a swing and a miss. That one cutting in on it. Strikeout number five for Jeff Samarge opens up this fifth inning. Placed that one perfectly. Going in and out, out and in, up and down. Actually tied up Brett Wallace. Let's check out the rotation on this pitch if we can. Yeah, that looks like a little cutter. And one out here in the fifth, and Derek Norris, a strikeout victim, back in the second inning, gets his second look tonight at Samarja. Straightened him up on a pitch running in at 94. Total of five strikeouts tonight for Samarja. Two walks. He allowed only two hits. Single by Kemp in the first. Single by Alexei Ramirez in the third. Swing and a miss. That at 92 appears to be the cut, right? He's yeah, cutting that exactly, right there. Because his fastball, his regular fastball is like 95, 96. Just that little bit of a cutter. Still low 90s on that. We got Wallace with and just got Norris to chase. Now a pop up that'll get back and out of play off to the right. Here in the fifth inning, Norris bats now. Alexei Ramirez waiting on deck. Padres trailing one to nothing here in the fifth. Fly ball right field. That'll send Blanco back and over, and it's going to be over his head and off the wall. Ricochet is nasty and by him, so Norris. The second base standing without a problem. That came off the bricks very hard out there in right field and in a hurry. Got by Blanco and Norris has got himself a one out double. A couple of factors here. The wind is blowing out to right field. He gets this pitch and sends it the opposite way. Now Blanco in right field's got to make a decision. The point of no return. He knows that outfield pretty well, so he gives up right about cheer. He'll play it and get it in quickly. That's a double any way you look at it. But the thing is, as an outfield, you got to know that wall because it darts out from 309 to 365. I mean, that's just not a straight shot. That angles no. out. And I think the wind had something to do with that too, because Absolutely. he was kind of gliding there in the beginning, like he had it under control. And next thing you know, it's over his head and off the wall. Wind blown. Wind aided. Norris will take it a double here with one out of the inning, and Alexei Ramirez waiting on an 0-1 pitch, and a grounder by the mound towards Panic at second base. We'll take care of Ramirez, but with the grounder to the right side, Norris takes third base with now two down in the inning. So again the Padres have a runner at third base they left Ramirez there in the third. See what happens here in the fifth. And Andrew Kashner coming up. Kashner with a sacrifice butt back in the third inning has two hits this year hitting at 200 two for ten. And a chance here to help out his own cause and tie this game up. The 
mentally how much is different is it to face an opposing pitcher when you're a pitcher. You mean as far as from a mental standpoint I mean you got to be thinking about oh yeah okay, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you got you got to get them out because you're never going to hear the end of it from your teammates. Like the Bartolo Colon thing. I yeah mean, it is what it is. Yeah. I'm just sure there's some razzing going on. But it matters if, whether or not the pitcher is a good hitter or not, because there are good pitchers. Right, absolutely. Hitters. If you walk a guy, if you give up a hit. Oh yeah, you'll you'll hear the razzing from your teammates, no question. A number of foul. You don't change what you're doing, I guess, is what I'm asking from right. a pitcher's standpoint. I mean, you're sure go out yeah. what you're doing. Just you're don't lay it changing in there. Anything. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why the concentration level you can't you can't take your foot off the pedal. You got to still concentrate just the same way. You know, I think it'd be kind of cool to have that distinction. I gave up. I gave up Bartolo Colon's home run. Why not? No. I don't know. I never pitched. In the air down the right field line on the move is Blanco. He's got room and he's going to make the catch. Had the bullpen mound to deal with down there, but he makes the grab and the Padres leave a runner at third. Halfway through, 1 0 Giants. All right, Mike, thanks very much. We play here into the bottom of the fifth inning, and Andrew Kashner back on the mound again. Kashner had 58 pitches as he starts this inning, 8, 9, and 1. For the Giants, Gregor Blanco singled the right field first time up and waiting around, hacking at that first pitch, fouls it back to the screen for strike one. And Kashner had a 1 2 3 inning in the fourth inning, getting Belt, Crawford, and Parker. And two one two three innings started his outing in the first inning for the one two three inning. Bump in and drag down the first baseline. Kashner will flip underhanded and hard to first base. Nice play by Kashner. Got a lot on that underhanded. Yeah, that's the key on that one. Stiff wrist so you can push the ball. You get that little lollipop, that little hump in it. It's a different story. There was a little bit of a hump in it, but watch how quickly gets that ball. A nice two-handed grab by Brent Wallace at first base. 
since 2013. The numbers for Andrew Kashner. You want him to go the other way. Trying to iron it out tonight after being on the DL. Hey, the first start back and the mentality you have to take as a pitcher. It starts tonight. Five in a row retired by Kashner. One down here in the fifth inning. They seen the opposing pitcher, Jeff Samarja, and a sacrifice bunt in the third inning. Ourselves a competition going on. You know, Cash's beard is looking much more full tonight. I think it's a lighting, or do you think it's just thicker? No, I think. I don't know. It just looks fuller. That's in there for a strike. Pours it in there. He's down three and zero. I mean, Andrew looks like he should have a big stick in his hand. He's got one of those bear rugs over his body, and he's got the rope around it tied. And Samarja looks like he should have a puffy shirt on with a pirate hat on, a, a sword in his hand. Swing and a miss, full count. Doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely, I'm with you. Yeah. He's got the bow and arrow, he's got the big stick, he's got the puffy shirt. In the dirt, and Kashner walks Samarja. Didn't want to do that. That's the third walk allowed by Kashner. The greater coverage of baseball is brought to you by T Mobile. Heard by Pomerantz and Mark Sweeney talking about Jackie Bradley Jr. now has a 20 game hitting streak. Mason Hamill, seven to third innings, part of a 12 1 win at St. Louis, and Chris Sale dealt his first loss of the year as the White Sox lose to the Cleveland Indians, six to two. Boy, 28 games. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. And the Red Sox record that Mike Pomerantz mentioned. Dominic DiMaggio, 34 games. So well within reach. Oh, yeah. Jackie Bradley Jr., one of the best outfielders I've ever seen play. Tremendous outfielder, but it has always been a question as to whether or not he play offensively. Well, right now he is getting it done. Really came together for him last year for the first time. There's a ground ball right side. Amarista try to start it to second for one, on to first for two. Caster needed that, gets it on the 4 6 3 double play that ends the fifth. We head to the sixth, 1 0 in San Francisco. This game summary has Samarja on the mound tonight for the Giants, and he has been very good so far. In some key situations and some nice defense turned in tonight by the Padres. Samarja and a good diving play with the shift on moving to the right side of the infield from third base. His teammates love it. As the Giants getting the game's first run on a questionable play at the plate, controversial. As Blanco got in just out of the reach, as it turns out, as the play initially was called out, but then they reviewed it. 
as the Giants challenged it and the call was overturned. So that is the only run of the contest right now. That came in the last half of the third inning. We play into the sixth inning now. Both starters in the game still. Jeff Samarja, 75 pitches as he starts this sixth inning. And he'll be dealing with the top of the Padres order in John Jay. Alexei Amarista and Matt Kemp scheduled to bat here in the sixth. Another big crowd on hand tonight here in San Francisco. 41,772. In fact, a few more than last night. Big crowds every night here in San Francisco. High fly ball to right field for Jay down towards the corner. Does it have enough? Yes, it does. It's gone. A home run. John Jay, his second home run of the year. And with one swing of the bat, the Padres have tied the score one to one. Well, John Jay, who's had success against Samarja in the past, and struck out twice against him tonight, and here he takes this one out of the yard. That'll warm things up in that Padre dugout. A first pitch breaking ball looked like a slider. Speeds up the bat of John Jay and just gets over that top part of the wall there, maybe the first or second row. And once again, it's only 309 down that right field line. Tied up one to one. Here is Marista takes a pitch that runs away, up and away. John Jay second in a Padres uniform. Christian Bethencourt there putting on some batting gloves was asking John Jay what that pitch was or where it was. That's crushing the mistake I was talking about. The first run since Sunday against the Dodgers. Three innings. That's a strike, and it's two and one. How come all the high strikes are called against Alexi? Isn't that weird? You see where that pitch huh. was? Yeah. It's uncanny. Line down the right field line and foul. That went right into the opera box down there. What is that area right there? It's an opera box. <laughs> yeah, they got the binoculars out. Yeah, no, I see that, but it's a pretty cool little area. There's no opera here. But well, baseball is kind of an opera, a ballet uh, mm -hmm. of some sorts. It's theatrical. There you go. Those Yahoo's having a good time down there. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And Marista strikes out. So Samarja bounces back, picks up. Strikeout number six and the first out of the inning. Hey, after the home run to John Jay, it looked like a little spinner. Hey, he's saying, you know what? We're tied. I'm going to challenge these guys. The fastball's been a good pitch tonight, and he goes down via the fastball. Alexia Amarista does. One out here in the sixth inning for Matt Kemp. One for two. Kemp with a single in the first inning. Rounded out to short in the fourth inning. His third look tonight at Jeff Samarja. Coming into this game tonight with a six and two record, 2.66 earned run average, tenth start in a Giants uniform. Temple followed back and it's 0 and 2. Outside one and two try to get Kemp to chase. He's been seeing a healthy diet of sliders lately. Swing and a miss, and Kemp strikes out. Back-to-back -back case now for Samarja, seven in all. 
MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out-of-market game live on HD or over 400 supported devices in HD on over 400. It includes a free subscription to AdPad Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. The two down here in the sixth inning. Young Herbis Solarte, the batter. Hold on, I'm getting text. On the ground and through into right field, a base hit. Right in between Belt and Panic. And Solarte on for the second time of this game. He had walked back in the fourth hey. inning. Always full of energy, Young Herbis Solarte, a two out knock, trying to create some thunder here. So two outs and Solarte at first base. Brings up Melvin Upton Jr. Swings to the first pitch and lifts it out to shallow left center field span coming from center. And he'll get there without a problem. Melvin ends the inning, but John Jay with a leadoff home run ties the score one to one. With his second home run in a Padres uniform. As we head to the bottom of the sixth inning, thanks to that home run by John Jay. A look at the Major League leaders' highest batting average this season. To me, the biggest surprise on this list right now is Daniel Murphy. Yes. How about that? I agree. He's a career 298 hitter, having a great year for the Washington Nationals. Um, Ryan Braun, okay. You know who I would pick if I were to start a team yep. uh, out of that list? Yep. I'm going Xander Bogarts. Why? Because he's a shortstop. I'm, I'm thinking young. Uh, very young. young. Uh, I'm thinking both sides of the baseball. Yep. Offense, defense. So XB, he's my guy. What's well, on here to the bottom of the sixth inning? Joe Panic, Matt Duffy, and Buster Posey. Hey, so you'd start a team around a shortstop. That's what you're thinking. Most important position on you the know, field. You know, I always joke about the pitcher being the best athlete and but, the smartest. Uh, yeah. But the shortstop, you look at any level, everywhere from Little League up, your best athlete is playing short. Because he's probably your number, he's probably your number one or two pitcher. If he's not pitching, he's playing short and vice versa. Got the most range, and that guy's pretty darn good, Alexei Ramirez. And we've mentioned this before. Since he was in the National or the American League with the White Sox, you know, you, you, you turn on the TV and you see a White Sox highlight and you see him make a play. But to see him play each and every day, Really appreciate Boy, it more. We, I really appreciate what he has done. No question. How about you there, Haas? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, you know, I think about it. There's ball four and down the first base goes Joe Panic. 
I gotta be honest with you too. I mean, I worked in the American League last 15 seasons, and I saw a lot of Alexi Ramirez. But you're right. Until you see him every day, you really don't have that kind of impression of him from afar. But now you see him, and I knew there were question marks coming into the season, being you know this late right. in his career. What's his range like? His range has been very good, very good. And you know, I didn't know much about his arm. I mean, I, I've seen a couple plays when when I'd see it on TV on a highlight, but. Going to his right into the hole and then having to make up the difference. Yep. Huge arm. Well, here's a grounder softly hit, and there to get it is Cashner. One play. He gets here to first base to get Duffy yeah, as Panic will take second base. Kind of worked like a sacrifice. No panic into scoring position quickly here. Giants trying to answer that Padres run in the top half of this inning. And it'll bring up Buster Posey. 0 for 2 in the game. He is grounded out to third, grounded out to second base, and the troubles at the plates continues to bother him. I mentioned just the 182 average with runners in scoring position. And he takes that and sends it down the left field line to the corner. Around from second base comes Panic. He'll score in the second with an RBI double goes Buster Posey. And the Giants, just like that, take a 2 1 lead. He went around right there, a double right down the line into left field. Well, good recognition out of the hand of Andrew Casher. Why? Because it was a hanging slider. First pitch slider speeds up the bat of Buster Posey. Doesn't mean you can't throw him a slider, it's just poorly located. He wants it down and away, and look at where that one is. On contact, sure, he's out in front a little bit, but just catches too much of the plate. So one out, Posey at second base. The Giants have taken the lead. And Brandon Belt, 0 for 2 in the game. He's swinging a miss at a fastball up. Center field, John Jay out there in center will make the catch with a second out, two down. Well, talking shortstops, and I'll tell you what, as a pitcher, you'd love to have a guy like Alexei Ramirez. Look at this one hopper, two hopper, spin, throw. Yeah, and he was excited about it as well because he did a little dance after that one, a little Bruce Lee kick. It's Bruce Lee night tonight, San Francisco, but he was a night early. Andrew Kashner loves it. That's fun to watch. Two down in the inning with Buster Posey at second base, a run in for the Giants, and Brandon Crawford, the batter, he has walked and struck out. Well, Bruce Lee was known for uh, the way of the dragon, but defensively, it's the way of Alexei. <laughs> it is Bruce Lee night here tonight, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. We've seen all kinds of video in between innings. Yeah. It's not the fist of fury, it's the glove of fury. Line to right, and that's in for a base hit. Posey being waved around. Kemp's throw from right is going to be late. Throw to second base is going to be late. Giants will take a 3 1 lead. Uh, Crawford's hit to right. Second run of this inning coming into score for San Francisco. Giants swinging early this inning. Matt Kemp gets set up. It's a high throw, but off the mark. And then Derek Norris has no choice but to try to get the runner. Brandon Crawford taking the throw on the throw from the outfield. Another run and another runner in scoring position. Big two out knock for San Francisco. And two down. Crawford at second base. And Kastner getting a visit from Norris, who will head back in behind the dish and get ready to deal with Jared Parker. Padres had just tied the score one to one with a run in the top half of this inning, but Giants answering with a pair so far here in the bottom of the sixth. Parker tonight 0 for 2 in his return to the majors. Called up from Sacramento as he'll take strike one. Swing 
going to miss on a pitch in the dirt, and it's 0 2. Master in his first start since coming off the disabled list here tonight. There's Brandon Crawford at second base. With two outs here in the sixth inning. Fly ball left field. Upton is there waiting. And he'll make the catch that ends the inning. But the Giants get two in the bottom of the sixth inning to take a 3 1 lead. Over the Padres as they get two in the bottom of the sixth inning, and we've been keeping an eye on that uh, delivery from Jeff Samarja. The spin move that he makes, uh, a lot like Johnny Cueto. We saw Cueto last night on the left, and watch as Cueto turns. He'll vary it, but so will Samarja. And looking on this one, Samarja's, I mean, he's pointing that knee to the scoreboard out in center field. He will vary that, creates a little deception. Obviously, Johnny Cueto, I mean, he'll, he'll do the old quick pitch, he'll do the no leg kick. Jeff Samarja pretty standard but he will vary it a little bit as far as the turn is concerned. And it's on to the seventh inning here and it'll be Brett Wallace Derek Norris and Alexei Ramirez. Andres have some movement in their pen looks like somebody's going to get up down there for San Diego. Maybe a couple of somebody's but it looks like Brad Hand will be first up. As Wallace leads it off here in the seventh. Wallace walked in the second inning, struck out swinging in the fifth inning. Giants are shifting on the right side on Wallace as they have all night, all series. We hope you will join us tomorrow, day baseball here from San Francisco in the finale. This three game series between the Padres and the Giants. Well, the Padres will be heading out to Arizona. Jake Peavy against James Shields here tomorrow. Pitch outside on the outside corner, that is. That appeared to be away, but. Ball to strike. All his swings and pops it up. Heading over is Duffy. And he'll make the catch. So one down here in the seventh inning. Mentioned Shields and PB, and here are their numbers heading into the finale of this series. Joining you at 12:30 tomorrow on Fox Sports San Diego. Both be making their 10th starts of the year, and it is a similar record-wise. Shields two and six, PV one and five. The PV with an 8.21 earned run average, while Shields 
They have a few more wins with just a 3.07 ERA. Yeah, a lot of base runners allowed by Jake Peavy, hence the high ERA, some big hits. Tell you what, though, uh, Jake Peavy, totally different pitcher, obviously, than he was back when he was a Padre, longer in the tooth. Yep. But one thing is for sure, that guy's going to go out there and compete with the best of them. Is he ever? You hear him grunt and oh. everything else. It's unbelievable. Is but he's pitched on guile for a long time yeah. now. I mean, just. Terrific over the years and you know, some championship teams, both in Boston and in San Francisco. I think him back when he was a Padre, back in 2007, how oh, dominant he was he then. Was fun to watch. Still fun to watch because of his competitiveness yep. out on the mound. Get inside on Norris, who pops it up. Sounded like a broken bat and a little pop up to second base. For the second out of the seventh inning. Time now for our fan Diego fans of the game. That's the Padres fans here in San Francisco. Trevor Hoffman fan there on the right. That's the old 1998 jersey on the left, the World Series team. Hey, there's Deb Martinez. The Madres are here. They're here a lot. Big fans of Don Rosillo, too, I hear. That's it, Ramirez. Oh, don't laugh. We'll take a pitch outside. And there's a Padre France sprinkled in there uh, in the bleacher section, braving it out in the cold. And amongst the orange and black is the Padre blue. All to the screen. I've met a lot of the Madres over the years. Love the Madres. Susie Butcher's in the house. Del Martinez. At one time, there used to be a cruise that was shared by three teams the Red Sox, the Orioles, and the Padres. An off season cruise, one that I would attend. And oftentimes, there were Padres fans on that cruise. Oh, yeah. Because, of course, Larry Lucchino had worked at all three places. Mm -hmm. So that's why they had the cruise that way. And they met a lot of the Padres over the years, years ago. And the Padres were just getting started. And now here I am. So I know a lot of the Padres over the years. Barb Cook. Barb Cook. She's a dandy. One of the best. Oh. Always on that cruise. Summer by Serrano. Way. Summer Serrano. Yes. Rings. Yeah. They love their friars. One two pitch. He is outside. Did you ever take the cruise? I did. How did I miss you? Forgot what year. It was Brewers, Orioles. I saw Earl Weaver, Jim Palmer, yeah. Bill Schroeder. Yeah. Where were you? I was probably <laughs> sleeping after the buffet. <laughs> after my third <laughs> time through the buffet line. The midnight buffet. Line drive and off the glove. The panic tried to time the leap. He timed it pretty well. But it can't come down with it. It's into right field and Alexei Ramirez, an opposite field base hit here with two down in the seventh inning. Well, Samarja still has that uh, heater going at 95 96. And boy, Alexei does a nice job of just going the opposite way. Nice, easy swing and just off the glove. Of panic. Well, that's going to be the night for Kashner as a pinch hitter here, and Christian Bethencourt going to bat with two outs in the seventh. And the Green thinking that uh, once well, swing of the bat here, he can tie the game. And Bethencourt as good as anybody in doing that. And only 82 pitches tonight for Kashner, but done after six innings. So Bethencourt pinch hitting in the seventh. So Marge has given up four long balls this year. Going into this game. And of course gave one up to John Jay in the sixth inning. Outside for ball one. Let's see if he consistently tries to keep the ball away because, with that said, Blanco in right field is playing a little bit, shading over towards the line a little bit. Span is in uh, center field on the second and the uh, first base side of second base. Fouled off to the right. You get uh, some margin now up over 100 pitches at 101. The Giants have both Strickland and Osage up in their pen.
inside to Bethancourt, two and one. Well, time now to check the Cholula flamethrower. 96 for Jeff Samarja. That's spicy hot. Little tank to it. With movement. Two one. And a check swing. Did he go? They'll check. No, he did not. Says Mike Winters. And it's three and one now to Christian Bethancourt. Well, now working a hitter's count at three and one, but does he go on that pitch? Ooh, very close. I thought he went. Gets another chance here. Three and one. Don't overswing. No. Strike two. Really? Pitch number five on the Fox tracks. Out of the hand, that's a ball. And pitch number five. Call the strike. Okay, it only takes one, right? They off pitch. Ball four, and down to first base goes Bethancourt. So he works the walk here. And now the Padres have two on with two down here in the seventh inning. Well, that's 105 pitches for Samarja. Averages over 107 per start and hitting that category. But here comes Bochi. Looks like Osit should be coming on here for the Giants. Going to make the change with two outs in the seventh inning. Josh Osich coming in. The pitching change from San Francisco. Reason why I enjoy pitching is the pitcher controls the ball game. Sure, the game doesn't go anywhere or start until the pitcher throws. I always enjoyed that, and you know the one thing about pitching is you can always go work on things yourself. So I remember as a kid going down to the junior high school, the high school, and I'd throw against the handball court. That's all I wanted to do, and as I did that, I always worked on fielding. Well, that was an early look at tonight's special edition of SD Live featuring none other than Mark McGuire tonight after Padres Live on Fox Sports San Diego. Looking forward to that. Is with two outs here, the Padres have two on. And the top of the order, John Jay to face Josh Osich into the game now for the Giants. And a grounder softly down the first baseline. Osich will not pick it up. And then get in the way, but reaching at first base will be Jay, and the bases will be loaded. Is another base on that? No, I don't think so. I think it'll be as is. He got in the way. There's no doubt about that. Ended up being in the baseline here, an obstruction. And Remember, I think he'll be given first base, and that's it. Yeah, John Jay pulls up, and then the contact is made. 
umpire pointed awarding John Jay the base no matter what. Obstructing the runner from trying to go to the bag right. So base is now loaded with two down. That goes down as an error charge to the pitcher so it is an E1. to with a foul tip. Yeah, the pitching change is brought to you by El Cajon Ford and Josh Osich into the game into his 23rd game for the Giants. Well left handed batters are just two for 31. It's an 065 average. You see those splits there. Righties though 333. Basically a three pitch pitcher fastball change up cutter. Big arm from the left side. You get up to 98 99. Average is about mid 90s at 95. On a strike now to Alexi Amarista, who has popped out his second, grounded out his second, and last time up struck out swinging. All of that was against Jeff Samarja. And Samarja leaves responsible for the runners at second and third. One one. And a foul off to the left out of play. Nice grab by a fan and brought his glove with him to the game. You bet. is filled with Padres and Marista does not chase and that's away two and two. Well, you're Osic, you almost got out of this thing with one pitch. He picks it up and throws it over. Jay Jay would have been out and the inning would have been over but instead did not handle it cleanly and the bases are now loaded. Two two pitch. Flare foul down the left field line into the crowd. Well, Osich mixing it up nicely. That last pitch prior to that one was a slider down and away. Now he tries to bury two seamer in. Matt Kemp waiting on deck, hoping to get a chance here in the Padres' seventh inning. Called Amarista backs out. Ramirez at third, Bethancourt at second, Jay at first, two down in the seventh inning. Amarista will take ball three, and now everybody's going to be on the move here with a full count and two down. So, opposing going to go out here and talk to Osich. In a tough spot here in the seventh inning with the Giants holding on to a 3 1 lead. I think you got to throw him a, a located fastball. Unless he's got confidence in that breaking ball. And for Alexi, he's got to think center of the diamond the other way. Try not to overswing. Everybody on the move here. Marista hits it on the ground to the backhand goes panic throw to first in time and Osich and the Giants out of the jam the Padres will leave them loaded Giants have a 3 1 lead.
go as the Padres and Giants play into the bottom of the seventh inning and the Padres have a great opportunity in the top half of the seventh but leave the bases loaded. New pitcher into the game here now for San Diego is Keith Hessler a call from Triple A El Paso yesterday and Padres have claimed him off waivers from the Diamondbacks back on May the 10th. And he was briefly up the first time as the 26 player added as part of the double header the day nighter in Chicago. Yep. So three lefties in the bullpen for Andy Green. Bookter, Hand, Hessler. Hessler sports a four seam fastball, a two seamer, and a slider. Andrew Cash into parts on the hook. Gregor Blanco leading it off here in the inning for the Giants in the bottom of the seventh. Kessler appeared in two games for the Arizona Diamondbacks this year before being designated for assignment on April the 30th. Strike over the inside corner. Brad Hand had been up, so the Padres had a couple of lefties up in the pen. Three quarter uh, and then arm delivery, so lefties they got to deal with that. The sweeping breaking ball that starts on the hip and then ends up in the outside corner. Cody Garrett he heating up for Bruce Boach and the Giants. Corey Garrett, I stand corrected. Corey. Who's it? I think I, did I say Cody? What is it, Corey? Not Cody, Cody Corey. Corey. Yeah. Last name's Garrett, it's one letter. 2 2. And that slap foul off to the left out of play. See, kind of an uneasy swing right there on that breaking ball. Not really aggressive attacking that pitch, and that's a good sign. On the ground, right side. It'll be Wallace. He's going to need help. Better hurry. And he's safe. Couldn't get the foot down in time. That's would not get over there quickly enough. And Blanco getting down the line quickly reaches at first base. Well, on contact, as soon as contact is made, that pitcher's got to get over there. And the feed is there. And bang, bang. You betcha. And as a runner, you see that play developing. He's got to catch, throw, catch it cleanly, and then beat you to the bag. And there's a little bit of a delay going on right now as Mark McGuire is on the phone. It's worth another look. Oh, that's a photo they finish. They reach at the same time almost. And they're not going to challenge. Oh, it is Kelby Tomlinson who is going to pinch hit here. You know, if you're going to break it down, if, if they they were to conclude that would be a tie, tie does not go to the runner. That's backyard real football. The runner has to beat the ball. He told me that before. I always thought it was that because I played backyard wiffle ball. So did I. Yeah. Anyway, runner so it first. Doesn't apply really in real baseball. Nope. nope. And Tomlinson. Pinch hitting here in the pitcher's spot. Nobody out in the seventh inning. And then Osich's spot. And a foul off to the right out of play. Tomlinson made a start last night for the Giants at second base. And coming off the bench. 339 average in 25 games this year. No homers, two runs batted in. There's the glasses. Little number front of the plate. Out is Norris. Clears the runner. Makes a good throw to first base. And Tomlinson retired two to three as Blanco takes second base. One out, a runner in scoring position. Hey, tonight, why not have a cup of decaf? A cup of coffee with Dick Enberg before you go to bed. He's going to talk with John Jay as they talk baseball, life off the field, and their untold dreams and aspirations. That's tonight after SD Live on Fox Sports San Diego. One out, Blanco at second base, and Denard Span coming up. 
And with a single in the third, one for three. And he drove in the Giants' first run with that base hit in the third. Broken back grounder. Amarista to Wallace. And on to third goes Blanco with now two outs in the inning. Sounded like it hurt. <laughs> Uh, that broke oh, that would hurt. On a night like tonight, you bet. Off the end or getting jammed. And Blanco 90 feet away and a chance here for Joe Panic. And it grounded out to first, is lined out to center. Walked and scored last inning. Away for ball one. If I could come back in another life, I want to be a left-handed specialist. I want to be a middle linebacker. Are you serious? Yes. You get the tar knocked I out. I always of wanted to be a middle linebacker. You're nuts. Fly around the field and tackle people. Oh. On the miss, two and zero. Oh. Seriously though, you know what I would like to be? What? Give me like a 16-year career as an NHL goalie. How sweet would that be? I'd say I, I think that's crazy. I'd rather do that than be a middle linebacker. That was a tough job. Two one pitches fouled off. Not that a middle linebacker isn't, but I think it'd be a lot of fun to sometimes you back off at the times you're part of the blitz package coming in. No, that's no, I mean that, it, it's a lot of fun. Actually, I'd rather be a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't bad. That ain't bad. <laughs> two two pitches fouled off down the left field line out of play. Can I be your drummer? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I don't golf. But I think being on the PGA Tour would be pretty cool. Yeah. If you're really good, yeah. If you're not so good, it could be a long summer. 2 2. And a swing and a miss, and Panic strikes out. Nice job by Hessler to get out of that jam. We head to the eighth inning. It's 3 1 San Francisco.
match. We play along here to the eighth inning and Corey Garen into the game. Now three pitch pitcher fastball slider and a changeup for the right hander. Well, sporting the salad like Jeff Samarja seems to be a trend his 22nd game well, high numbers as far as the splits are concerned right he's 246 has yet to surrender a long ball Padres need base runners the Padres actually out hitting the Giants in this game six to five a trail three to one now Garen is not a, you know he's not a 96 98 guy but he has tremendous movement I mean, if you're talking to get a ground ball, this is your guy right here. Watch the movement on his two seam fastball. There's a slider there. And Garen has held opponents scoreless in 17 of 21 outings. Right handers hitting at 246 against him. Hasn't walked a right handed batter since April the 6th. And he falls behind Kent now, 3 0. What was that stat you just said? He's not allowed to walk to a right handed batter since April the 6th, 57 at bats since April the 6th, and he's fallen behind Kent, 3 0. So it could be timely. There's a strike, and it's 3 and 1. Did you see the movement on that pitch? Pretty nasty. Wow. Fly ball hit pretty well out towards right field. Blanco on the run, going to be up over his head and one hop the wall. Camp headed for two, thinking about three. He'll touch second and head to third base. Throw to third is going to be not in time. And Kemp has got himself a triple to begin the eighth inning. Corey Gearin, the right hander. He is a strike thrower. He's got tremendous movement on that two seam fastball. And what do you do? You have to try to get him up in the zone. Not even close on the first one. Now he's going to work it to a 3 0 count. Matt Kemp is. There's a strike on the inside corner. Hitters count. He's challenging Matt Kemp. Gets it up into that jet stream. Right center field. Speaking of challenging, the Giants are going to challenge the out call at third or the safe call at third base. You know, that was very close. I didn't really think it was going to be that close. That's pretty close. Yes, it is. Kemp had been thrown out trying to leg a single into a double earlier in this game. I don't think that throw could have been more spot on on the one hop. And they're showing it on the big board here. The crowd reacts to what they think will be overturned. Wow. What do you think? I think he may be out. Yeah. He is out. Wow. So credit him with a double. Thrown out at third base. Well, it's two times tonight, Don. Matt Kemp. Hit that ball in the first inning. Tried to go to second base, was thrown out, and now trying to stretch it into a triple. Thrown out. Nine to four to two. Ooh, tough break. Nine to four to five. And the put out of third base. John Hervis Solarte now bats with one out here in the eighth. has lined out at second, walked in single, so been on base twice. Now drives this foul down the right field line out of play. What's one of those rules in baseball? First and last out at third base? Is that what it is? You don't want to make it. You don't want to make it, right?
ground right side. Joe Panic to his left. Throws out Solarte. Two down. Melvin Upton Jr. with two outs here in the eighth. Our game presented in HD by Sony. Beautiful pictures tonight from AT&T Park. In San Francisco, game two of the three-game series. We'll play day baseball tomorrow. Padres trailing the Giants here three to one with two outs in the eighth inning. It's away for ball one. Up to tonight has struck out, lined into a double play, and flied out to center. Outside corner, and it's a ball and a strike. Just started this game tonight for the Giants. Six and two thirds, six hits, a run. Walk three, struck out seven. Picture of record right now. Well, you can bet if Melvin Upton Jr. gets on base, you got Brett Wallace on deck. They got Javi Lopez warming up, the left hander on the right. And the righty, Hunter Strickland, on the left. Wallace waiting on deck with two down and now a count of two and two to Melvin Upton Jr. Off the end of the bat on the ground to second. It's panic again. And the Padres are retired in the eighth. Giants have a 3 1 lead as they come to bat in the bottom of the Padres Baseball brought to you by San Diego's best window company, Simply Great Windows. By Petco, your complete pet store. And by your San Diego County Lexus dealers. Now back in San Francisco as we head to the last half of the eighth inning. Kessler is still out there for the Padres into his second inning of relief as he came on in the seventh inning. Gave up the leadoff base hit to Gregor Blanco, but get out of it. It's a good looking hat. Mm -hmm. First pitch strike over the outside corner to Matt Duffy. Leads it off here for the Giants. That was the giraffe hat in honor of Brandon Belt, who's due up third this inning, the lefty. 
Swing and a miss on a pitch biting down and in. Two pitch coming up here to Duffy leading it off in the eighth. And that is just going to miss. Frame there by Norris. Fouled off to the right out of play. Okay, I'm going to go way back here. I, I, far? I see Hessler on the mound. I think yeah. of Andy Hassler. Remember I, the pitcher? I, I remember the name. I yeah. don't remember the. I remember his delivery or anything. So is that what you're talking about? The way he works? Just as the name. way he looks. What are you talking? I'm about? trying to get Hassler out of my mind because I remember you know growing up and hearing about him and watching pitch Andy Hassler, but no, Keith Hessler. Oh, okay, I got you there. Oh, oh got the shift. Here out to center field, straight away center. This time he beats the shift and has himself a double to begin things here in the eighth. Well, the potter has been playing him the other way exaggeratedly. That's not even a word, but you know what I mean. Over towards right center field. <laughs> and this time he takes it to straightaway center. Well, look at this. You've got a, an outfielder in the left center field gap, one in the right center field gap, and he's just going to split the difference. Look at that. You see where the outfielders are, and yep. he goes right to where that 399 sign is, just a little bit to the right of that, splitting the. Oh. Unbelievable. And now, first base open. They're not going to do with Posey. They'll put him on. And a double to drive in the go ahead run in the sixth inning. This will be an intentional walk that'll put runners at first and second. With nobody out here in the eighth. First base, so two on, nobody out. You got Brandon Bell coming up. Well, we have the lefty lefty matchup here for Keith Hassler. And Brandon Bell swinging the bat well is only grounding in two double plays this year. We talked about it last night, but the Giants second most grounding into double plays in the National League. Here's one right here. With nobody out in the last of the eighth inning. Runners at first and second. Elevate, spell doesn't chase, and it's 2 0. Oh. Head to the Padres ninth inning. Brett Wallace, Derek Norris, and Alexei Ramirez. Six, seven, and eight expected for the Padres. But right now they got to keep the Giants from scoring any more runs, and it's now three and oh to Brandon Bell. Four on the bases are loaded. Well, intentionally walked Posey to get to Belt, and then Belt is walked. And the bases are loaded with nobody out. Yeah, Brandon Crawford coming up here now for the Giants. And no room for error here because we know how Brandon Crawford can use the whole field and take a pitch nicely the other way with the best of them. And I'm guessing first pitch breaky ball. I've said that before. Usually with runners in scoring position, you don't want to, you know, throw him a fastball right down the middle or locate one. You miss one, he's going to jump all over it. So I'm expecting a little wrinkle in one. Hopefully he gets ahead with it. Crawford tonight has walked, struck out, had an RBI single. 
Three grand slams in his career. Infield in all the way around. Very good the breaking ball and missed. To right, and this is trouble. And it's going to get down and roll. Back towards the track and the wall. It's going to roll around. It'll clear the bases as Crawford will head for third base and get there with a stand up bases clearing triple. That puts the Giants on top six to one. Quickly by Kent to the track and the wall. Duffy, Posey, and Belt all score. Well, it's not going to happen every time, but a lefty on a lefty, the intent, the walk wasn't good to belt. Now, another lefty coming up, Brandon Crawford. You've got to get those left handers out. Falling behind doesn't help. We're back to the breaking ball, but great plate coverage by Brandon Crawford. And the floodgates open. As the ball gets all the way to the wall, and Crawford is in there with a triple. What a game tonight for Crawford. Two hits, four runs batted in. More recently, the bases clearing triple. Now Parker will try to bring him in with the infield in all the way around. A swing and a miss for strike one. Parker 0 for 3 in the game. He's got it back to the mound, lined out to center, flied out to left. In the dirt. It's blocked there by Norris to his left. Action for the Giants as George Contos up in the Giants' pad. He's a foul ball to center field. John Jay going back, way back at the wall. It's gone. Two run home run for Jared Parker in his return to the major leagues. Called up from Sacramento today, hits a two run home run and puts the Giants on top, eight to one. have opened this game up here in the eighth scoring five times so far. Well the frustrating part of this whole inning is the intentional walk to Buster Posey to get to the lefties a trio of lefties coming up now another lefty in Gregor Blanco but a walk a triple and a home run. Ouch. Still nobody out here in the eighth, and Blanco will take strike one. The Giants have had trouble scoring runs, not tonight. That's so now kind of taking one for the team here and trying to get through this inning. Touch for five runs. That'll bounce in for ball two. On the ground, right side, Amarista. The throw out Blanco for the first out here of the eighth inning. Okay, pinch hitter coming up here. Trevor Brown will bat in the pitcher spot now for the Giants with one out in the eighth. First appearance of the series for Brown. Here now in 19 games, 11 starts. Getting at 255. Four homers, 10 runs batted in. Fouls it off to the right out of play for strike one. Fly 
ball center field. Jay started back now comes in and Jay makes the catch. And a bad read there initially as he started back but recovered quickly. With good speed to come on to make the catch for the second out of the inning. So Brown retired it's back up top for Denard Span. Time now for the in the driver's seat brought to you by Kia Brandon Crawford with a big game here tonight for the Giants. Two for three of the triple four runs batted in. This is loaded triple coming in this the eighth inning. Swing and a miss. That's been down 0 and 2. Bernard Span with a single back in the third inning and an RBI. One for four night for the Giants center fielder. O2 and is fouled off to the left out of play. Well, oh, you hate it when the wheels come off late, huh? Yeah. And once again, the frustrating part is having a lefty go in there to try to get the lefties out. I mean, it's not a good ratio tonight, obviously. To walk Posey intentionally to get to the left handers. This was a much closer game if you look at it. Yeah. Than what appears right now. In the dirt. And it is one and two. Padres had some early chances too that went by the board. You take a look at this game. They left Ramirez at third yep. in the third. Oh, left Norris at third in the fifth, and they left the bases loaded yep. in the seventh. Plenty of opportunities. Well, that's still trying to get out of this inning without any further damage. One, two. Fly ball left center Jay on the run and Jay's not going to get there. One hops the wall back by the 382 marker and a double for Denard Span to keep this inning going for the Giants. Giants will have their ninth batter of the inning coming up as Span with a double. Yeah, right down the middle. He wanted buried inside, but it leaked over the heart of the plate, taking it the opposite way. Well, out of the reach of a uh, nice effort right there by John Jay, but another extra base hit. By the way, Andy Hassler came up to the big leagues as a 19 year old. He was left handed. Pitch for the Angels, Royals, Red Sox, Nets, Pirates. Angels again and the Cardinals. What did his career end? He had a nice career. In 1985 with the Cardinals, he was 44 and 71 with the 3 8 ERA, mostly relief. It's from Tucson, the old Pueblo. Check swing, but a strike call by home plate umpire Mike Muchlinski. In. Good block by Norris. <laughs> to center field. John Jay back a few steps and he'll haul it in for the out that ends the inning. But a big inning for the Giants. They score five times, take an 8 1 lead.
pitches for the Giants as we head to the ninth inning. As Buster Posey has taken over at first base here, moving from catcher to first. And Trevor Brown now the catcher for the Giants. And the new pitcher is George Contos into the game now for San Francisco. Comes the fourth arm used for Bruce Bochy into his 10th game of the year with a record of 0 1, 3.52 earned run average. To the splits, and righty's hitting just 188 against Contos, who takes over for Corey Garen. Garen got the final out of the seventh inning, so he goes at third. No hits, no runs, no walks, nor did he strike anybody out. So Contos coming in here to pitch the ninth inning with Giants opening this game up on top now eight to one. So Bruce Bochy giving some uh, rest to the the knees and the legs of Buster Posey going over to first base. Brandon Belt coming out of the game. Posey stays in. Brown takes over behind the dish, and here is Brett Wallace. His walk struck out, popped out. Oh, Contos was on the DL recently. He made his first appearance Friday night since being activated. So this is a good opportunity with the seven-run lead to go out there and get an inning of work. Jeff Samarja, the pitcher of record tonight for the Giants, six and two-thirds, one run. Up six hits, walk three, struck out seven, and Samarja right now in line for his seventh win of the year. Make him seven and two with a victory tonight. 2-0 to Brett Wallace. You know, this is really remarkable, incredible, and frustrating all at the same time. And this streak that the Giants have put together against the Powders this year. It's just I'm speechless. Well, you look at where the Padres are right now heading into this action. Eight and a half games back of the Giants, and you win, say, half of these games in the season series, and you're right yeah. in the mix. Yep. These head to head matchups. Fouled off the leg or foot of Wallace as him taking a little stroll out of the box with a full count. See, that's a better move by the home plate umpire. You see that? Taking some time. Yep. Talking to uh, Brown and dusting off home plate. Professional courtesy. Oh, yeah. Let the pain subside a little bit. Broken bat, flare to right. It's going to get in for a hit. Wallace, a painful at bat after fouling that pitch off himself, got himself a base hit to begin the ninth inning. Well, it's time now for our Carl Jr. star of the game and the starting pitcher tonight for the Giants, Jeff Samarja. Pitching in line right now for his seventh win of the year. Ended up with seven strikeouts and six and two thirds. Well, he's had one heck of a May. We talked about that earlier, the numbers that he has put up. He continues to roll. Seagulls have made their way in here to AT&T oh. Park. A lot of the better than 41,000 departing this game. And after the big bottom of the eighth inning for the Giants scoring five times. And they're eyeing those chili fries out there in the bleachers. Derek Norris with a double in the fifth. He's had a one for three night tonight for the Padres. And this one will get away. Brown may have gotten crossed up, not sure. But Wallace will take second base. Pass ball, the indication. Charge of the catcher, Trevor Brown.
on the ground softly towards first Posey will pick it up and take it to the bag himself to retire Norris as Wallace takes third base. Time now for the Bill Howe play of the game and Jan Hervis Salarte on this play diving on the shift on the right side of the infield playing third base tonight but able to take this and Rob Belt of what would have been a hit. He leaves it all on the field, doesn't he? Energetic. Loves to play. It's infectious. Nice play, Jan Hermes. One down, Wallace at third base, and Alexei Ramirez. Two hits tonight, both singles. One to left, one to right. And Lions out the third base. Right about Duffy, a hot shot, but Duffy was there. And the Padres are down to their last out. This copyright telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres. It may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. So two down, and Wallace at third base. Squad coming to their feet in San Francisco. After Sanchez pinch hitting here in the pitcher's spot. That's outside for ball one. Between the White Sox and the Padres, a 214 average for Sanchez. Getting out of the way of the pitch down and in. Played only two games for the White Sox this season before being designated for assignment back on May the 9th. <laughs> Swing and a miss, and it's two and one now to Hector Sanchez. Hector Sanchez, a former Giant, but to Lincecum's no hitter against the Padres. You had to remind me, huh? 2 1. And that's going to miss. 3 and 1. And of course, Lincecum signed with the Angels, right? Yes. Had so a tryout for a bunch of teams. Yeah, performed gonna, in front of a bunch of teams. Going to spend some time in the minors and get uh, geared up to make a start in the big league soon for the Halos. Sanchez lines it foul down towards the Padres pen and it's a full count now three and two. Well they loved Sanchez here in San Francisco. I remember talking to Bruce Bowen who said he could be a starter in a lot of teams. That's how happy he was with him. Of course had a great attitude backing up to Buster Posey. Two outs in the ninth inning in a full count. And Brett Wallace at third base. And a grounder foul by the Padres dugout. Two. And it's fouled off to the left out of play. Trying to finish off the Padres here. Two down in the ninth. Payoff pitch again. 
Sanchez and a base hit into left field. Wallace will score from third base. And an RBI single for Sanchez. Makes it eight to two now. Well, you talk about beating the shift there. Nobody. I mean, Glenn Hoffman, the third base coach, was close to that ball than uh, the shortstop was, Crawford. Duffy on the shift. Duffy was uh, at the shortstop position. It's stand corrected. So two down. And a ground ball to short. Here is Crawford. He'll go to first, and that will end the ball game. So the Padres still unable to beat the Giants as the Giants win tonight 8-2, to and we send it to Mike Pomerantz.